Hello and welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is American Ben. The weather grows cold, the sky dark, the algorithm stirs, and the day to seize is nigh. Marvel movies, John Wick, Star Wars, The Mandalorian, they call to us. Make content and own the YouTubes. Conquer the internet and never, ever, ever brush your hair or iron your shirt in doing so. Yeah, it's getting to be that time when the major franchises shall descend upon this channel, showering the masses with blessings of lore and useless information. And yet, in this time of great views and viral triumphs, why is it that my heart still whispers of The Expanse, that little old space opera by the sea? Yeah, you want me to talk about The Mandalorian? Hell, I'll do it. It's a great show. But even when I do, I shallan't forget of protomolecular things and the Rosinante in Zero G. A big character breakdown is coming with winter. She's on her way. But we still have ships to cover before the fall is out, lest we miss a single vessel and fail our audience in every single way. We've done battleships, freighters, and mobile Mormon temples too. Everything in the Great Void is game in this series. But today we delve into the lap of luxury, as where the ships we've covered thus far have mostly prioritized utility, this one is all about grandeur and riches. I talk, of course, of the Guan Xi Inn, Jules Pierre Mao's epic space yacht, aboard which he indulges in delectation to his extrajudicial heart's content beyond the eye of governments and their pesky rules and irritating human rights. Now say what you want about Jules Pierre Mao. He's a madman, a psycho, a corporate demon, a megalomaniac, a kidnapper, a child torturer, a murderer. That's fair, but do not say that the man does not have taste to balance out those more negative characteristics. The Guan Xi Inn is perhaps the grandest, most elegant ship in the Expanse. It's a vacuum-rated plaza hotel more than it is a spaceship. Its external design and architecture is sophisticated and modern, taking the appearance of a giant metallic fish, slivering through the void in silent comfort with what I assume is an Epstein drive at its stern. This is, of course, a yacht, and as is true for any yacht, mansion, or Cadillac Escalade, the space aboard is more bountiful than necessary for the sake of extravagance. The Guan Xi Inn could probably carry about 200 passengers if its owner was to have the interior of the ship laid out in an efficient way. But instead, every deck is committed to the comfort and pleasure of its super rich owner. A main stateroom on each floor serves a different function to that stated end, whether a media center or a game room. Of course, we are most acquainted with the lounge, which we can assume is decorated not so unlike the rooms on other floors. The lounge stands out for its opulence. I mean, I know we've seen sliding doors before, but damn, those are some nice ass doors. Just saying, I definitely walk through those. Anyway, the wall tapestry and various ornaments together give the lounge an East Asian, perhaps mostly Japanese aesthetic. There's samurai armor, urns and pots, mythical creatures, and unfortunately for the thousand year old artifacts, Bobby Draper, though I suppose I've already mentioned mythical creatures. At the mini bar near the entrance to the room is a fine selection of alcoholic beverages for some general fun or to be employed as a helping hand in a hygiene burn. The bar has future tinged Japanese tea sets and some delicious hors d'oeuvres, such as cucumbers for Bobby Draper's delight. Damn, Bobby, chill. At the head of the room is the actual lounging area where leather couches have apparently not quite gone out of style. To be fair, vegans actually might have won the future and it could just be the skin of his enemies. Giant high definition screens are embedded into the wall above and behind the couches. The screens are operated by hand terminals, which can be used to display threatening video communication type beams from corrupt UN officials. The furniture is great too. I mean, I know that serious stuff is going down here, but damn, that chair looks comfy. Meanwhile, the tables appear to be nothing special, but they are bulletproof. Everything in the Guan Xi Inn is bulletproof. Furniture, doors, Bobby Draper, and so on. Connecting all of the rooms in the ship are wide, well-lit, sleek blue paneled hallways. Most ships in the Expanse have much tighter corridors, but the Guan Xi Inn has space to suit the claustrophobic claustrophobic spacefarer's soul. If hallways aren't your thing, or you need to traverse the ship more stealthily, as seen in the lounge and running throughout the ship, are ventilation shafts which people can use to go all golden eye on their foes. Most of you won't get that reference, will you? <sighs> I'm old. Of course, if you don't have to avoid a cadre of hired guards trying to kill you, then you'll be safe just taking the elevator. Whew, my god, close call. That elevator almost got really hurt. The elevator actually opens up right into some of the ship's staterooms, including its flight deck. The flight deck is just a small room, probably because there's no use wasting the bigger spaces on flying systems when they can be used to house bowling alleys and indoor pools. And I'm not saying that we have proof that the ship has those facilities, but it probably has those facilities. Nonetheless, the flight deck has a few different consoles with screens above them for monitoring and communication functions. Notably, the consoles on the flight deck are operated by keyboards and joysticks sticks, thus vindicating all of you who in previous ship videos so stridently asserted the superiority of buttons and switches over less reliable touchscreens. If the Agatha King has keyboards and switches because it's antiquated, 
and the Rosinante has touchscreens because it's modern, then the Guanxian has keyboards and a bit of touchscreen functionality because it's a step into the future. So mazel tov to y'all out there who love your buttons and switches. By the way, I'm still thinking about starting a YouTube channel strictly on buttons. I feel like I'm an expert now, I just don't know how they work. But I digress. The flight deck, as is true of many other ships in the Expanse, also contains a center table console that, yes, does employ touchscreen operation. We don't see much of this console, but it's safe to assume it acts as a hub for all the ship's systems and can be used to operate just about any feature of the ship. Also, can we talk about that chair in the background? I mean, damn, I want to sit in that thing. I have to say, I really respect that Jules Pierre Mal values where he sits and operates in the lazy boy realm of consciousness. Now I'm not quite sure of the Guanxian's offensive capabilities, though I'm sure it has some technology in that regard. But one thing we do learn about is the ship's various defensive systems. On the flight deck, we see the Guanxian's automatic defense countermeasures kick in when a UN ship launches missiles at it. What is that? What the hell are you doing? It wasn't me. It's the automatic defense countermeasures. Defense against what? Aaron Wright is going with missiles from that escort ship. Additionally, when crew member Theo is trying to access the Razorback in the airlock, he explains that he can't get in because... Yeah, but you are. The hangar bay won't open. What? It's the countermeasures. When the ship's under threat, everything goes into lockdown. So when the ship is being targeted by missiles, all of its escape routes lock down. Makes sense. Actually, the ship's systems are somewhat disturbingly dedicated to locking people inside. Earlier on, Theo threatened to manually put the ship into complete lockdown, though Bobby Draper was able to override this threat with intimidation. Then when the ship went into actual lockdown, she bypassed the system by scaling its side to access the airlock override on the outside of the ship's bow, and then just went all Incredible Hulk on the airlock doors. Side note, not sure what it says about the strength of the bulkhead that Bobby blew a hole in it fairly easily, but I mean her armor's minigun firing from point-blank range would probably penetrate most ships. Getting back to the airlocks, though, there are two shuttle bays on the Guanxi Inn, one of which we see housed the Razorback, a racing pinnace, and the other, the UN dropship of Vassarala and crew parked in the ship. The Razorback shuttle bay features a docking bridge with a retractable cover that extends to allow crew members without EVA suits to board the shuttle safely. Additionally, this bay uses an elevator platform to raise the shuttle into launch position at the exterior of the ship, where it then breaks free and takes off. Now, there's just a few more details I want to point out about the ship. One, for storage, the ship has cargo bins built into the hallway walls, which Bobby Draper finds convenient for storing people. Two, there must be a weapons locker somewhere on the ship, given all of the firearms we see, though they do not have any anti-Draper rifles. Finally, despite all of the unscrupulous and demonic things that Jules Pierre Mao does, let's at least give him credit for making sure to install recycling chutes on his yacht. Again, the dude might be a corrupt, child-kidnapping madman, but he's got taste and he's eco-friendly. So between his good and bad traits, I'd call it a wash. But hey, you're free to disagree and be wrong. Anyways, that is the video. If you did like it, please do give it a big thumbs up. I know, I know, I know there's only a small thumbs up. Fine, just give it that. Um, definitely leave a comment down below if you wish. Um, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. For now, my name is American Ben, and I'll catch you next time. Generation Films, peace.